Well, that seems like a real long time ago now, uh, but actually uh, when I was young, uh, actually a child, uh, I was, my family was quite poor and uh, we really didn't have any money and my friend that I was going to grammar school with was caddying out at the Del Paso Country Club and I saw him with a few dollars in his pocket all the time so I followed him out there one day and they asked me when I arrived if I was 12 years old yet and I said yes I was even though I was only 11 so I started caddying at the Del Paso Country Club when I was 11 years old and uh, really the rest is history I've never left golf since uh, the good news for me was is that I made a real good friend who was the pro at the country club by the name of Frank Minch Sr. and he uh, took me under his wing and uh, really developed me both as a player and as a person. Well, the team has uh, come a long way uh, and uh, really at this point there aren't any team members uh, that are young right out of college anymore. They've uh, been around a while. Uh, I have uh, Terry Daubert, who's my uh, president of the Morton Golf, uh, and he has been here 32 years, and he comes with a degree from uh, University of Colorado in management and uh, is doing an incredible job. Uh, then there's my son, Ken Morton Jr., uh, who's really uh, now uh, in his 40s, and he's been here at the golf course since he was just a young boy, so he has a lot of seasoning as well, and he's an expert in merchandising, uh, being the president of the Association of Golf Merchandisers for uh, four years running, uh, and is just doing an incredible job. Uh, he has love and passion for what he does. Then my other son, Ken Tom Morton, uh, he's uh, working really hard in the player development department, does a great job in, um, in creating new golfers and uh, managing uh, all the golf pros that work at our facilities. And then there's Mike Woods, who when he was going to Sac State uh, playing soccer, uh, came here as also a golf team member, and he's never left. So everybody here now has been here 15 years or longer and uh, been around. They all have a huge passion for the game. Uh, frankly, I'm the one that's blessed. Um, well, it's really kind of hard for me to, uh, to talk about that if you want to know the truth. Uh, but it is certainly true that uh, our team has created a national reputation because of the different uh, programs that we have developed here and that we're, we tend to be out on the cutting edge uh, in trends and new ideas. Uh, and so uh, the PGA of America uh, and other golf associations uh, tend to look at us as a, as a companies who, who, whose model, business model, they'd like to uh, copy or put into their education programs. Well, I think heritage is the history so that we really understand uh, where the game came from uh, and that uh, we have always been here to develop uh, golfers and to uh, reach out from peop to people through all walks of life. So uh, we feel like we're uh, on solid ground and, and we know what, what, what generated the game originally. Uh, then the next one is, uh, is business culture. And uh, in the early 1990s, uh, I began to realize that, uh, that those businesses that were doing well uh, uh, had uh, systems and processes and uh, they also had uh, good training programs and they really tried to uh, to be organized behind the scenes uh, and so I began to develop a lot of structure within our organization uh, to try to develop uh, ways to make sure that that everything was kind of done on a on a highly professional level that was also an era when we begin to computerize and uh, and we got into the computer age which really formalized our business model innovation is uh, is something that uh, we try to be involved with at all times. Uh, we have tremendous technology in all of our departments from the point of sale systems to club fitting equipment uh, and, and other, uh, other things we do. But innovation isn't just in equipment, it also is the, uh, the people that work for you. Are they being innovative in knowing what the new trends are? 
Are they being innovative in how they treat customers? Are they being innovative in, in the, the new and, and tw modern twists in life? And uh, we try to stay up on all of those things so uh, our, our people are uh, ready uh, for the, whatever is new. Well, each, co each company should decide really what level of services they can afford. Uh, because uh, sometimes you can offer services people don't want and that they really can't afford and that's a turnoff. Uh, then you have to really determine from your customers what they want. That's the second D and the D plus one is that you give them what they want plus one percent at every single encounter throughout their day at the golf course. Well, stewards of the game means that um, we want to preserve uh, what the game has stood for in all these years. Uh, I mean the game's a couple hundred years old and uh, it's for uh, honesty and integrity and relationship building and, uh, and things that we all need throughout our lives. And uh, we really need to preserve those things as much as we can. At the same time, golf is competing now with all kinds of other things that are going on in people's lives so we have to make it fun. So uh, we are both working on trying to make it fun uh, and, to, uh, and to keep the core values that go along with the game of golf. Well uh, now we're getting in behind the scenes uh, and you really are asking the question as to how we manage. And we have two things that we manage by. One is behaviors. We're constantly looking at the behaviors of all the people that work here. The other way we manage is by the numbers. And uh, we have all kinds of daily operating reports to give us uh, the amount of detail that we need to be able to see how well all the people working here are, are doing. And we're constantly staying on top of the numbers uh, to make sure that, um, that we are reaching or exceeding budget. Uh, in order to uh, create a bottom line so that we can put money back into our business. And uh, it is a constant battle. I mean, you just never can let up on either one of those management styles. Well, the, con the only thing that's constant is change. And uh, the people in golf and in our society are constantly changing. And uh, what they want to do, what they like to do, what, what, what makes them uh, enjoy their life is constantly changing. So we have to stay on the cutting edge of finding out uh, what it takes to keep people interested in the game. So innovation really is about learning about your clientele, learning about your community, and being out in front of trying to create things so that when the people come out at the golf course they have more fun than if they would be doing something else in their life. And if you're not creating more fun at the golf course than another facility or another uh, type of sport, well then you're just going to lose them, lose them to them. I think the most important thing to our company is that each and every year we take a, an assessment of how the year went. In other words, we do a SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we have the entire team, right down to the minimum wage people, involved in the process so that we can honestly look at ourselves and to, and to find out where we can get better. So. Fortunately, I've been here a long time, uh, uh, my partners have been here a long time, and if each year we just continue to get better and build on what we have over a period of 10, 20, 30 years, then it really becomes something. Uh, the game today is, is in a place where there's a Y on the road. And um, we're either going to maintain our traditional way of doing things the way we have in the past and not conform to uh, the way the world is today or we're going to make some serious changes as a sport and uh, find ways to uh, bring people into the game in different ways than we've ever done it before and uh, we have to continually look at that and if we don't look at it we're, we're going we're to continue to go backwards. 
Um, I would say that uh, the changes ahead are very are dramatic, but I do see the allied associations throughout golf beginning to come together to be able to find ways in order to do that. And, uh, and I do see uh, player development becoming a, a critical piece down the road. If we can get into the school systems and bring golf into the schools and have it taught in schools, long term we're going to be in good shape. If we can't do that, we're probably going to lose out to the other sports. Well, one of our core values uh, in, our, in our company is to make work fun. Uh, and that's a, that's a real critical part. Uh, the hard part to know is, is what fun means to your customer. And, uh, and we need to always be listening to our customer to find out what fun is uh, so that we can do the things that they, they need done. Uh, fun to one person may not be fun to another person. And so as we're giving golf instruction, as we're selling products, as we're serving people in the restaurant, as we're dispersing carts, uh, if we're happy, we have happy people working here, most likely they're going to deliver happiness and that's going to spread around the golf course. Ken Morton Sr. and his company is pieces of pros throughout the country. Uh, for over 30 years, I have been giving head pro training seminars and, different, and, and other kinds of seminars for the PGA of America and other allied associations. And in every room, there are some very talented and gifted people. And if you uh, ask the right questions and you listen well enough, you can bring back a great idea and put it to use at your course. And frankly, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I just pick up good ideas from a lot of people. And so over, for over 30 years, I have been bringing a few great ideas to our golf facilities uh, that, that are being accomplished by other successful golf pros. And so uh, uh, listening is a great aspect. I guess that's why uh, God gave us two ears and one mouth. Well, we have to um, grow the game by uh, finding out what, uh, what excites people. I mean, we're into an era now where uh, young children are spending the majority of their time with new technology, uh, and, they're, and they're taking up other things for their time, and, uh, and, and even the community doesn't trust uh, their, their kids to be out and play in the front yards anymore to get exercise, so uh, we have to start attracting uh, young people into the game in totally different ways than we did before. We have to bring to them more than just golf. We have to bring to them a lot of the, the good core values that, that golf teaches us as, as well as uh, uh, the, uh, the fun part of it and uh, the creativity of learning with it and to, to control yourself. And if we do those things and we bring this to the school system, uh, the, the game will be uh, better off in the long run. Well, there are a lot of uh, young, talented, gifted children uh, that don't have uh, the opportunity to play this great game. Uh, I was given that opportunity when I was a young boy as a caddy. And, uh, and that opportunity for young people isn't there anymore because caddies uh, are not used like they were with the invention of the golf cart. So uh, we have to... Uh, we, we have to now bring the game to people in a different way. And uh, we have to bring it to the, them in a way where they really uh, see it for being more than just a chasing the ball down the fairway. Uh, we, have to, uh, we have to make it fun. We have to make it exciting. We have to make it uh, competitive. And, uh, and these young children now, with all this pent-up energy, uh, we have to actually treat them a lot different than we did 20, 30 years ago. We have to keep them busy, keep them thinking, keep them active. And, uh, and if we do those things, then, then it will be, uh, will be really good. And so the Morton Golf Foundation was created to create dollars to be able to go to the African American Association, the Latino Junior Golf Association, uh, some disabled programs, and several other uh, 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 associations throughout Sacramento so that uh, we could actually bring people into the game 
in ways that we weren't able to do this a few years ago. Uh, we're really excited about uh, doing that and we're excited about the potential. We're now having several kids earn college scholarships at the end of their uh, at the end of high school based on their golf game and uh, in the uh, old way of doing things those kids wouldn't most of those kids wouldn't be getting those scholarships so we're really excited about uh, what we're able to do to uh, bring people into the game that didn't used to be able to play it. Actually um, when you say Morton Golf Management Team uh, I have to include the entire team top to bottom, bottom to top. What makes me the most proud is that when I know that customers are being treated consistently and, and the, in the right way that from when they drive into the golf course and when they leave, then I'm a very happy guy. Uh, what makes me the most proud is that I feel like I have lived a pretty balanced life and that uh, I've had an unbelievable career far beyond anything I could have ever dreamt up. And then I have the most beautiful, wonderful family that anybody could have dreamt up. So I'm the blessed one.